Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we are going to take a look at how to run Kali Linux within Docker container. So there might be a few, a few different use cases that you uh, uh, might be looking to solve using running Kali Linux in a containerized environment. Uh, the first uh, thing that comes to mind is having an isolated uh lab environment for testing your ethical hacking skills and learning new tools and utilities regarding uh cyber security uh, the thing is you want a quick and easy way to deploy Kali linux and, and get started with it for uh, whatever engagement that you are working on uh, and this gives you a completely isolated environment from your host machine so you can uh, mess up anything within the container that you are running and you can destroy it and read on the Kali Linux uh, container and uh, it will start as a new fresh uh, distribution. So these are a couple of uh, different use cases that you might be looking to solve using Kali Linux and uh, within our container image. So another thing to keep in mind uh while doing that is there are a few prerequisites that needs to be uh, installed the first uh, prerequisite over here is having docker installed or ins on your system and have that up and running so i i have already i'm already running docker uh, on my system so if i go ahead and open my terminal and run uh, docker ls and just run docker ps uh, and it will uh, as you can see currently i don't have any container running and the command is working that means docker is already running in the background uh, on my system once uh, that's done we need to pull the latest version of uh, kali linux kali rolling container image from docker hub so just copy this command and run this in your terminal so you see it is automatically fetching the latest uh, Im container uh, image that is available so i already had it uh, downloaded so it didn't take that long for me to pull the image in on my system so depending on your internet connection uh, it might take some time to pull the image on the system so before running the actual container using this image i want to highlight a few things so if you open the following link i will be mentioning this in the description as well you can see there are quite a, a, diff, uh, a lot of different container images that are available for kali linux so we are using the kali rolling edition so this is the main image which is going to be the most up-to-date uh, image available and it will have all the latest packages available as well and this is the last release image so this is based on the last stable release so over here they also mentioned like this is based on 2019 and 2020, uh, 2020 uh, releases so the, uh, this is another thing that you can use then these are the experimental and dev releases uh, these are going to be much less stable than the rolling one but if you want to experiment with the latest kernel or any changes that are coming up in kali uh, these are the images that you can use so going back to our documentation on how we can run this in docker so once this is done we need to run the following command to execute uh, to run the container image and what this is doing is this is running the this particular image kali rolling and providing us a tty interactive session in our terminal just copy this command and come to your terminal and paste it over here just a few things to mention so there is a known issue in docker uh, when you run docker containers that it does not uh, give your container images the complete internet band bandwidth this is due to some dns related issue within docker so to resolve that what we need to do is we are going to pass this uh, argument as the docker run command so dash dash dns and now we are going to do equal to and in uh, semicolon uh, in the quotations we are going to provide the uh, google dns so this is going to uh, tell the container to use uh, google dns instead of the default dns so this might resolve the 
uh, issue that you might have uh, with the internet speeds on the uh, container. So this once this is done, what we need to do is we need to run this command app update just to see if our repository is up to date. So over here you can see it is uh, you, it is fetching the information latest information from our uh, Kali Linux repository. Another thing that you can see over here is uh, the internet speed. So this is pretty uh, low for the internet connection that I am currently using. So uh, we can uh, check this as well, like uh, what could be the other issues that are causing slow internet uh, connection on the uh, Kali Linux system. Now you see it dropped to 300 KBs. So and another thing that might be causing this delay is the uh, the meter that is being used uh, to fetch the repository information. So over here you can see we are using mirror dot or host dot az. So there might be some bandwidth limitations on this particular mirror. So what we can do is we can update this uh, and change this mirror and use uh, uh, one other from the official Kali Linux uh, documentation. So what we need to do is we need to open up this uh, link. So this is uh, another uh, documentation from uh, community Kali Linux mirrors. So I will be uh, mentioning this as well in the description down below. So you can uh, follow this as well. So uh, once you are here, uh, we are going to open this link. So this is the main repository link uh, for Kali Linux packages. So if you click on mirror list, it will give you a list of all the available mirrors that we have. So currently you can see uh, this is the one that we are using, but I am going to change it and use the Cloudflare provided one because cloud uh, cloudflare has multiple edge locations in uh, uh, throughout the region so this is going to provide me the best uh, match for the mirror server that we are going to use for our uh, for my uh, instance of uh, kali linux so once we have copied this link so just copy this go back to your terminal and now we need to check if nano is installed on uh, okay so nano is not installed so let's just quickly install nano let's install nano so this is going to install nano package uh, it is a text file editor so let's just uh, wait for this to get installed now it is installed so let's do nano etc uh, at source dot list and over here we are going to replace this particular uh, url with the cloudflare uh, mirror url so just remove this and paste the cloudflare uh, mirror url and from here we are going to remove the s from http we are just going to use http connection so save this file now that's done. Let's go back to the Docker container uh, documentation. And over here, you can, uh, one other thing that is important to mention over here is the default container images uh, that are provided by uh, Kali Linux. They do not come with any meta packages pre-installed. So this is just the basic Kali Linux distro without any uh, security tools installed in the system. And in order to install those, we need to run the following command. So uh, this is going to install Kali Linux headless version. So all the packages that uh, does not require any GUI interface, it is going to go ahead and install uh, those within our container. Just copy this command and paste it over here and hit enter. And uh, let's see if changing the mirror URL uh, made any difference uh, to the speeds that we are getting uh, to install any packages. So just give it a second. Uh, 
Okay, now it's downloading the uh, required packages from uh, our mirror location. And you can see previously we were getting around 300 KB uh, per second. And now we are getting around uh, 3840 KB per second. And it, it is also improving as well. So now it's 6000. Uh, this is going uh, the time it takes to install all of these packages this is going to depend on the internet connection that you are using so over here it's giving me an estimate time of five minutes but depending on your connection it might be different so i will be back once this process is done I'm back again. So now the download process for all the packages is done, and this is going to uh, now this is asking me to provide some configuration and uh, information. So the first thing that we need to choose is the character set that we want to use. So I'm going to use uh, choose 23. So this is going to pick up uh, the most optimal character set for my system. So once that's done, this is going to ask me about Kismet. Uh, so I'm going to yeah, say yes, and the group that I want to add it to is going to be root. Uh, no, I don't want my MAC address to be changed automatically. Uh, should non super users be able to capture packets? Yes. And okay, so this is regarding SSLH configuration. So I'm going to choose one over here. Now this is going to go ahead and install all the packages and if any other configurational input is required, it is going to ask me. So I'm going to pause the video once again and let this finish up and I will see you after the installation process is done. I'm back once again. So it seems like all the installation uh, is done for the meta packages. So let's see if any of the tools are available for us to test let's see if there is airmon ng so you can see airmon ng is already installed there are some li libraries that needs to be installed uh, other than that to make it work but that is pretty straightforward so let's see if uh, some of the scanners are there let's try with nikto you can see Nikto is working. What about WP scan? Okay, so that is working as well, as you can see. And let's run another command just to verify if that's also installed. AMS, this is a reconnaissance tool. So you can see all the tools are installed and working. That means that meta uh, packages are successfully installed. Now we don't want to do, uh, we don't want to run these commands and install the meta packages every time we run this container. So what you can do is we can exit uh, from this container. So this is going to save the state of this uh, container uh, till this point, till we exit it from it. So that means all the packages and uh, libraries that we installed, they are going to still be present within this but the only thing is it is not running just to see if this is present you can run docker container ls dash dash all so this is going to give you a list of all the containers that are uh, were running so you can see over here kali linux is here it was created 25 minutes ago and we just exited it from uh, the session. So now uh, what we can do is we can re uh, we can start this container and this will start from the same uh, uh, state that we exited from. So let's do Docker start and we need to copy paste this hash this is going to start the container so now if we do docker container ls it is going to say, uh, tell us like uh, the container for Kali linux just went up four seconds ago that's great and now what we can do is we can attach to that uh, container attach and paste the same uh, hash over here and you can see we are inside the uh, linux uh, Kali linux container and if we run 
AMS, you can see it is working. So this is how you can have a persistent isolated Kali Linux uh, uh, environment within your uh, Linux, within your Mac OS or uh, Windows or Linux system. Another thing that I do just to make my life easier uh, instead of running Docker commands every time is I create aliases within my .zshrc file. So what you can do is uh, nano .zshrc and this is going to open your .zshrc config and over here what I do is I create aliases for the most frequent commands that i use so if we go down over here and what i'm going to do is add another section uh, over here and uh, this is going to be named as kali talker and now i'm going to add an alias kali Linux and this is going to execute the following command. Let me open the docker attach copy and paste it here. And once the container is started, we are going to attach to the container. So for that, we are going to run. Yeah, so first we need to start. Oh, yeah, so start as well. So I think we copied the command for attach. So let's go ahead and paste the start command and save this file. Okay, so this is done. Control S Q. Now this should be saved. Let's do source and now if i type kali linux this is going to directly start the container and give me access to kali linux container image so i don't need to remember the docker commands and uh, run the commands again so this is it for this video if you guys have any other question or you uh, you have any concerns or you are facing any issue while uh, doing this Feel free to comment down below in the uh, in the comment section, and we will try to help you resolve the issue. Uh, and if you like the video, do like, share, and subscribe to our channel for, uh, to receive latest updates on upcoming videos. And thanks for watching.